We call on our fellow citizens here and elsewhere to aid us in funds to help the poor, unfortunate fugitives who come to us daily. In many cases, destitute of clothing, weary of traveling, and hungry. No one is so poor as to be unable to give a little to this downtrodden class. We appeal to the sympathy of ladies and gentlemen everywhere. We are in want of material and cast of clothing. All funds forwarded to Stephen Myers, William H. Top, or any gentleman of the committee will be faithfully applied. All letters directed to this office will be duly answered. Stephen Myers, General Agent and Superintendent. Stephen Myers was a former slave and he was an abolitionist and he was a superintendent of the Underground Railroad. He helped organize the whole area. One of Stephen Myers' greatest accomplishments was marrying Harriet Myers. Stephen Myers was the superintendent of the Underground Railroad and he helped organize the whole area. Stephen and Harriet Myers had five kids. Elizabeth Myers, Abram Myers, Captain Myers, Stephen Myers Jr., and Harriet Myers. Stephen and Harriet Myers' main role was to protect slaves and feed them and give them a place to stay. Stephen and Harriet Myers were family-oriented professionals and abolitionists. I feel like these underground railroad stations, they're important because they allow this, the freedom seekers to rest get clothes, shelter, and like get situated for like, like being free and stuff. Personally, I could probably walk a mile at most without before having to rest. So for free, people seeking their freedom, having to walk hundreds of miles, being chased high in, in the hot sun, Back in the days where there was no AC or nothing, none of that. Me personally, I feel like I wouldn't be able to do that because I'm just not built for that. But back then, but I feel like it was important that they were able to do that because since they were able to do that, that's the reason why I'm here today, living the life that I'm living. Harriet Tubman was a former slave who led hundreds of slaves up north to freedom and a young abolitionist. Harriet Tubman's real name is Armita Ross and I did some research and I found that by changing her name it was important because she was never found so that it made it difficult for them to find her when she changed her name. The chances of Harriet coming through the Myers residence was very high. Albany, August 20th, 1860, Anti-Slavery Office, Number 10, Black Street. Mr. W. M. J. Esquire, sir. The two fugitives arrived here that you sent, and I sent them immediately on their route for Canada. In this month, we have had 10. We have sent off the two that you sent. Sir, they had some money they said that you gave them. Some had enough to get to Canada, but the others had none. Mr. Myers is not home. He is at Lake George this evening as butler. And you see, sir, I have to attend to the fugitives myself. I was very thankful that you gave some aid, for it was on Saturday. They came, and it would have been difficult to get money to send them on that day. It is hard to get money for the fugitives, for it seems that the prejudice for our class grows stronger every day. And we have a few good friends that feel for the bleeding slaves that come panning at their doors. I thank you for all the favors you have done for the downtrodden that comes to this office. May God bless you, sir, and your posterity. Yours for the press, Harriet Myers.
trying to get out his ID and his wallet out his um, pocket, and he let the officer know that he was re he had a firearm and he was reaching for his wallet, and the officer just shot him. And um, the connection between my character Toby and from what I experienced, um, whites nowadays assume that black people are just out there for no good. They feel like we're running streets to do something bad, but we're actually not. And that's how slave owners saw slaves when they were actually free, like how police stop blacks nowadays when we're actually not doing nothing. I was coming from basketball practice. I was walking down the street, and two police officers thought me and my friend was looking suspicious. So they pulled us over and they checked our bags and they found a weed bag, but we knew it wasn't ours because it just came from playing basketball. Like, in this situation I was scared because I didn't know what to expect. But also it was embarrassing because I don't smoke weed, I play ball, and that was like, that made me feel bad, like why would police stop me for no reason over a weed bag that I don't, you know, have, perhaps to go with the weed or whatever. They didn't find nothing, um, they handcuffed us and put us on the curb because they thought we would escape or something like that, but nothing was really going down. Leah was a former slave that was free, but she matched the description of a slave that had ran away. The bounty hunters came up to her and asked for her papers. She gave them the papers and she said she was a free woman. Then the bounty hunters pointed to her face and was like, this is her, this is her. And she was taken back to the south, to the masters. She was captured by bounty hunters. Sandra Bland was an African-American woman that was driving but failed to put on her signals to turn into a different lane and she was stopped by a police officer. The police officer asked her for her license and registration. And he went to, in her car to check and she lit up a cigarette and he had asked her to put it out but she felt like she didn't have to put it out because it was her car. And then he got aggravated because she wasn't listening to him. So he opened her door and was threatening her, saying that he was going to light her up and stuff like that, and took her out of her car and arrested her. No, she was not breaking any laws for lighting her cigarette. When the bounty hunters brought Leah back to their master in the south, they probably tortured her or probably killed her. How would they have killed her? They probably would have hung her or they would have probably just beaten her to death. So how does, how does Leah's story connect to Sandra Bland's story? 